thank you for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be reviewing and unboxing the 3D Maker Pro Mole Scanner. So I actually got this in the mail a couple of days ago and they were so kind to send me a scanner to review. Although I did not purchase this out of pocket, I will provide my 100% honest reviews. I have a lot of experience working with scanners, so I do have very high expectations. So I will definitely point out any anything that stands out to me and what you may want to know before getting this scanner. So without wasting too much time, let's get into the video. Okay, so I got the premium uh, package here and I'm not quite sure what the difference between the standard premium and luxury is. However, I also got sent the phone holder so that I'll be able to scan with my phone through the app. I don't know exactly how this works yet, but we can unbox it and figure it out together. Okay, I'm gonna grab some scissors because I don't have anything right now. Okay. Ah! So it says here that it's compatible with the iOS system. Got some goodies in here. So there is power for type C, phone type C, da data interface and a reset button. Then we have the logo here, but it looks like we have a little phone adapter. I have my phone over here. I have so many stickers on my phone. I'm becoming that one person that just has like too much going on. This one says peace, love and 3D printing. Okay. So now I do have a case on it. I may have to take it off, but for now, ooh, yeah, I probably will have to take it off. So I do have to download the app because I don't have anything on here. And I believe there's an adapter here, maybe for light or the scanner itself, probably, I don't know. Okay, so we have some cables here. As you can see, I just put it in the charging port and then on the port on the side here, this is type C. So I'm probably gonna move over to the table to get a better shot of the unboxing. So just give me one minute. Handy dandy scissors. So this is a pretty good sign. Everything is nicely packaged. Out of the box, the presentation is so nice. Wow. Okay, so let's open her up. Ooh, got the zippers. Everything is, is assembled quite nicely. Okay, so we got the cord. We have the actual tripod, I'm assuming. Different adapters, cord, another cord. Then we could probably just assemble this here. Okay. Perfect. So I guess if you're traveling, it's kind of handy to have the different adapters. You can just kind of twist on and twist off. Kind of cool. We have our legs for our tripod. Awesome. It's really nice and um, fits in your hand really nicely. It's kind of an odd shape, but um, not too bad. In terms of weight, I would say it's like one pound, maybe. Not that heavy. All right. So let's screw this on. Ah, I'm silly. Now there's an adapter. Overall, really easy to set up. I would say it took me two minutes. On the bottom here, we have our central port for our power. And it looks like to be the only port. And like I've seen on other scanners, you typically have to connect to the power on the port here, which it does look like it's the same case gonna unravel that okay perfect the plates are actually in here that makes sense <laughs> okay there we go I'm assuming no tracking markers are required as I don't see any in here Let's see if that goes right here there we go so this, there's actually a plug for the turntable as well. So that goes directly into the computer. And then, like I said before, the power cable to the device and into the computer. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's go download the software and get started. 
Okay, so I made my way to my computer and now I'm just gonna download the software. You could just go on to 3D Maker Pro website and under support, there should be a download tab and um, a software tab. So you can just go there to find all the downloads and the recent iterations of the software. I would recommend getting the latest software uh, just because I have used earlier versions in the past in my workplace and it did not perform too well. I would say from looking back now and using the most recent software, it has substantially improved and it's much easier to use and the quality of the scans are much better despite being the same scanner. The downloading process did not take too long, about a couple of minutes. My computer did flag it for security purposes. So just remember to make sure you uh, turn that off. If you're having issues with downloading the software, it's most probably either your antivirus or something flagging it as uh, security purposes. So I did decide to go on a little trip to a value village as I like to do. I needed some inspiration. I needed a couple of things to scan i felt like i didn't really have anything around my apartment so i took a little trip and found a couple of goodies i have too many items to scan in this particular video so i will make a second part while i scan the best products that i found and then also i will be making a remix and 3d printing it so i think that will be pretty exciting i can't fit this all in one video because i'm already at seven minutes so stay tuned for a part two i love going to the thrift shop despite half of it being complete junk but it's also for a good laugh like that little pink thing on the shelf is like a banana container and it just it made me chuckle it's it's pretty funny but yeah you can find really cool things that you can repurpose like i can scan this flower and add it as an addition to another sculpture I've also found a lot of enjoyment in baking lately, as you can see. So I decided to get this little bag to kind of give me some inspiration on some baking molds and cookie cutters and, and such. I don't know if this is interesting, but I might create a baking mold from a 3D scan that I've done on the mold. Uh, if this is something that would interest you, I can definitely try it out. I can repurpose the scan and add more detail and create either a chocolate mold, a cake mold, or whatever, a candle mold. I am down for the experimentation. Okay, so after I had my little adventure, I started scanning the ceramic shoe that I found and it has been picking up quite nicely. I found that I had to adjust the brightness and the sensitivity a little bit so that there was a little bit of red showing, but there wasn't too much overexposure happening. On the left panel, it shows that it's in excellent range. Now it says it's too far. So you wanna make sure that it is relatively in range within the whole scan. It may have some difficulty capturing some specific details. And another thing is this scanner is primarily for small to medium size objects. So the items that I picked were probably the max in terms of uh, sizing that the scanner can handle, especially in the table scan mode, because the range of view is quite small and I found that it was cutting off some of my scans. That could easily be resolved by doing the easy scan and just revolving the actual scanner around the object. However, I found that the easiest process was just using the table scan and completing it that way. So it's pretty hands-free. You don't have to really do much. The turntable is automated and the scan um, successfully kind of captures on its own. Uh, for the best results, I noticed that taking multiple scans and then stitching them together was the best. I really like the manual and auto align function. The auto align is actually fairly well. It's kind of like other scanners that I've used. You just press the align, you choose which scans you want to incorporate as you can see here and then once you click align it just takes a couple of moments to find familiar data points and stitch them together 
After that, you can still do some editing. So I was able to kind of clean it up a little bit. Overall, I would say the quality of the skin is quite nice. The scanner has an accuracy of 50 microns and a resolution of 100 microns. This also does have a dedicated scanning app, which I will talk about in a separate video. It is quite interesting. And like I said previously, there is a standard combo, a premium uh, pack and a luxury pack. So I do now know the difference after doing some research. So the standard just comes with the scanner itself. I would recommend looking into the premium, which is the next step up because it does come with the turntable and tripod, which makes it really handy to do a lot of scans. I think it would be a lot more work and would require a few more iterations to get the quality of the scans that I am showing here today. So I definitely do recommend getting the premium instead of the standard. It does give you a lot more ease of use. And the next step up is the luxury pack. So this includes all the power cords, the scanner, tripod, turntable, and additionally, a really cool light box component for the smartphone or for a DSLR camera. So you would attach this and you would be able to get color and texture from your camera and incorporate that into your scan to get a high quality color 3d model i think this is pretty cool i didn't end up getting the luxury pack but there's a lot of videos online on how it works so you can get a better idea to see if this is something you'd be interested in i did leave the links in the description if you're interested in purchasing if you're unsure what scanner is right for you i would definitely take a couple of moments to do some research and take a look at the 3d maker pro product line because there are a couple of scanners that have specific pros and cons for example the seal is really good as a overall versatile scanner it does start at a cheaper price range so if that is more suitable for you I would take a look at that if you're looking at something with a larger scanning range like I said previously the mole is great for small to medium but if you are scanning large objects I would take a look at the links it is fairly good on accuracy as well and it has that mid range in pricing and then you have the more expensive ones such as the magic swift and the whale which which can go up to $10,000. So it really does depend on what you're looking for. I would say personally, from my experience, this scanner is great if you're just starting out and you want that mid-range scanner. The software was fairly easy to learn. It may take a couple of tries to get used to the scanner and how to operate it optimally, but it shouldn't be too difficult. I didn't have many issues. Like other scanners I've used in the past, I definitely do recommend a scanning spray. I didn't use it for any of the ceramic items that I scanned today. However, I did attempt to scan a more chrome-like item and it did have some issues of reflectivity, which is completely normal. So a scanning spray would be best as a pairing, for scanning items that may cause an issue for reflectivity. As you can see here, these are two scans that are aligned together. I am cleaning them up using the lasso tool before creating a mesh model. And I really like these tools for cleaning up all the excess noise and data that you don't want because it does cut out a lot of time for processing. Another benefit is if you find that when you stitch two scans together and you're missing some data, you can always go back and take another scan, which is what I did here. I took a third scan that is currently in the blue, which captured more detail on the face of the unicorn. Uh, after that, I've noticed that the scan was pretty much complete. There wasn't too much data that was missing. And so I decided it was a pretty good place to complete the scan and create a mesh model. It does take a couple of minutes depending on the specs of your computer, but overall uh, it, it was fairly quick. And here I saw some imperfections, which were actually very easy to remove prior to exporting. On the top right, you can see that there's some processing functions. So you can remove noise, you can repair, you can simplify the data, and then you can 
figure out your texture map. I find that this would probably work best, the texture map feature with the light box. I tried to process a scan and realign the texture map, but since I had four different scans, it was struggling a little bit, but I'm sure that process is very much simplified with the light box feature. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about the mole directly, I'll be happy to answer it. I'm uh, going to be completing more scans because I want to really test the limits. I want to try reflective items and super small items. I'll see you guys next time with a new video.